Well, uh, my name is Jim Caseman, and I've had a, I've really enjoyed uh, the time that we've had together sharing on how to be led by the Spirit. And so I've concluded my part, and what I've asked uh, two of my children to do, uh, Desi being my oldest daughter and Annette being my second oldest, I've asked them to share some of their experiences in how to be led by the Spirit. And I thought that might be interesting for you to hear that. And so uh, I'm sure that you'll enjoy it. So be blessed and we'll uh, talk to you again on another subject soon. Amen. Hello, I'm Annette Rice, Annette Caseman Rice. And yes, you are watching the Getting to Know God series with Jim Caseman. It just happens to not be Jim Caseman today. He has been um, doing his Getting to Know God series for a long, long time now and um, covers so many subjects and topics in the Bible on how you can get to know God. Um, if you haven't watched any other ones, make sure and go back um, and watch them. Start at number one and use that as your daily devotions. I encourage you to do that. You will be blessed and grow. That is the purpose of these. Um, but since session number 356, um, he has been talking about how to be led by the Holy Spirit. And he just felt impressed to give examples of his life, our life, as a family, growing um, growing to learn how to be led by the Holy Spirit and giving examples of sometimes when he did it wrong and sometimes when he did things right. Um, and it does help people to understand things more with examples. And so he wanted me to come on today and just share an example of a situation that involved being led by the Holy Spirit that really was a matter of life and death um, and a thing that could have changed our family quite a bit. Uh, and the ministry was infected then by affect the ministry. So um, anyway, if you want to go back and start, I think I already said that on 356, you could start with the whole sessions on how to be led by the Holy Spirit. But um, Back in 1979, uh, Jim Caseman had graduated from Raymond in 1975, and then we had moved back up here to Minnesota. So, I mean, he was new to all of this stuff still, but one thing as a child growing up in their home, I watched them and would my mom and dad be able to walk their faith walk out in front of us kids, and we saw by example on how they did things. And um, I'm grateful for that, very, very grateful for that. Um, and in 1979, we had, um, there was a school that's, we lived in Wilmer, and um, there's a school not too far from here in Princeburg, a Christian school, and someone had graciously paid for my sister Desi and I to attend this school. But they had a bus then that would come into Wilmer and bus us um, to the town of Princeburg. And so in September of 1979, coming home one day from school, um, the bus got hit by a semi-truck on the highway. It was a tragic, terrible accident where two of my classmates died. Many kids were injured. Um, and so then to back up the story on that day, the, I was in eighth grade, Desi was in 11th grade, and for some reason, the eighth graders, I was sat in the back of the bus. We were the cool kids. <laughs> Usually it's the older kids, but it was the eighth graders. And so just like any other normal day, I get on the bus. My friends are on there in the back. And hey, Annette, we got your seat. Come, come in the back of the bus. And it's just as I started walking down the aisle of the bus, I just had like a check in my spirit or an icky feeling, no peace, um, to stop and sit right where I was standing which would have been the middle of the bus over like the wheel wells of the bus and which was an odd thing because I never sat there I always went in the back of the bus with my friends um but I just it was just a it was a leading of the Holy Spirit to not sit in the back of the bus that day and so I just said no I'm gonna sit in the middle today why don't you guys come up and let's sit in the middle and I turned around and just sat. They did not come up with me, which was really strange then for me to still stay in the middle as an eighth grader. You know, there's lots of peer pressure of things to do, what's, what's cool and what you always do and what would people think, what would your friends think if you don't do what you normally do. So I'm very thankful that I obeyed that nudging of the Holy Spirit to sit in the middle of the bus that day. And, and one thing 
my mom was not there on the bus to tell me, Annette, I don't have peace about you going in the back of the bus today. You probably should sit in the middle. My mom wasn't there. My dad wasn't there. So you, no matter what your age is, you have to follow the Holy Spirit for yourself. But you as parents out there, you need to train up your children so they can and, and help them to do it for themselves because there will be times where you won't be with them. So again, I'm just so grateful for that. I obeyed that and I, I was able to know how to obey that. Um, and so then of course, when we're coming into Wilmer, it's harvest season. There's lots of semi trucks hauling the grain, a uh, heavy full semi truck full of grain. There was a couple stops that we did on the highway of houses that their driveways were off the, the highway there and they had just stopped and let off. Um, one person drove, oh, I don't know, a little ways down the highway a little bit, didn't, you know, didn't get up any speed or anything and was going to stop at that second driveway to let off some other gals. And the semi truck coming on the highway didn't realize that the bus was not going fast and was getting ready to stop and it just stopped. And so it had crashed into the back of the bus. It smooshed it in at least two or three rows of seats were smooshed in flipped it on its side into the ditch, made a big gash into the bus where one of my classmates that died was thrown out of the bus. Um, so we're up on our side, couldn't get out the door because that was the side that was down into the ditch. So we all had to go out the back of the bus over another very injured uh, classmate of mine that was on the, the in the back of the bus down there. And the bus driver's telling everyone, just keep walking, get out the back, don't look down. Um, then all of the kids were transferred to the hospital. And this happened to be, I forgot to say this at the beginning, I believe it was my dad's first trip to Finland, which was a very, very important trip. That's where he heard about doing the Russian book project, translating Kenneth Hagin's books into the Russian language, which was a huge first big project for AFCM and Jim Casey Ministries. Um, and my dad was overseas, over in Finland when this happened. Um, so I believe the devil was trying to really mess up that part of the ministry and what God had called my dad to do. So anyway, um, we went to the hospital. We were um, just checked out and released. Um, no injuries. Um, we didn't have any um, um, scratches or nothing even. So, I mean, that was just, that was God. Um, so anyway, I'm so thankful that I obeyed God and that I knew how to obey God. And that that's what it was. It wasn't God just saying, Annette, stop, don't sit in the back of the bus. It was that knowing, that um, following your peace. Um, you may have a good feeling to do something or an icky feeling not to do something. And that was what I had was that icky feeling. Um, and then one of the things I wanted to say too about that is we went to the funeral of one of the, the classmates and this has nothing to do with how to be led by the Holy Spirit, but it just kind of stuck out with me. And if you if you ever hear this or think of this, don't say this. But the, the pastor of that church said, um, well, God needed another flower for his garden. And as an eighth grader, 13-year-old, that just, I still remember it, obviously, to this day. It just struck a, a wrong chord with me, like, no. That is not right. God does not need flowers for his garden. If he did, he'd just create him himself. He's not going to take a young life that had still so much living to do. That was the devil that did that. That was not God. And I, I do, you hear that kind of thing a lot in funerals and that's just wrong. But anyway, that was a rabbit hole there. A little side note. Um, so uh, that was what I wanted to talk to you about today is um, you never know. It could be little things. Or major things that you just always need to be following the Holy Spirit. That's what he's here for. Um, to lead you, to guide you, to be your advocate. Um, and use that. You have a right. You have a secret weapon with the Holy Spirit to be able to accomplish so much more and be effective and stay alive. Especially in this end times. Just I encourage you to just uh, keen in that. Uh, start listening with the small things and, and just on a daily basis, be tuned in to listening to the Holy Spirit on things that you should do. And um, all will go well with you. The Holy Spirit is always leading us in every situation and everything we do. So are we listening? We need to listen and then obey. 
um, what he's telling us to do. So I'm just about out of time. I don't want to run over the 10 minutes. <laughs> um, and I do have one more story to tell that I will tell you um, in another session sometime. So thanks for listening and be led. Be led by the Holy Spirit and obey that nudging. Be blessed. <laughs>